Hello and welcome to this painting demonstration of a blue jay on a branch. I started by tracing my subject onto my cold press watercolor paper, Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold press. And before I do anything, I'm going to premix all of the colors that I'm going to need for the background. And the set I'm using is Daniel Smith, and it's their set of six um, primaries. And I do have the supplies listed in the description if you'd like to check that out. I find that using a warm and cool version of each primary helps to get almost any color that I want. And it's great, you don't have to spend a lot of money on paints and supplies if you're just getting started. So what I'm doing here is I am pre-wetting the paper with my large mop brush and I'm going to carefully paint around the branch and around the bird rather than using masking fluid for this. So I'm just being really careful around that area and then just picking up a little bit of speed as I get some more um, empty areas there. I just want to make sure that everything is uniformly wet and I do see that it does start to dry as I um, go back to the first area I started at. So I'm just going to just keep wetting the area so it's all uniformly wet before I get started with the paint. You can see that I mixed up a bright yellow, a medium green, and a dark green, as well as just a little bit of blue to peek through the look, um, peek through the leaves in the background. I'm going to make a bokeh effect, which is basically just a photography term for um, the blurry background. <laughs> so now that the paper is all wet, I'm going to start with my lightest color here. This is the yellow, and this is. Uh, Hansa yellow is a cool bright yellow and then in between some of these areas I'm going to use my medium green which is just my Hansa yellow mixed with a little bit of phthalo blue which is the cool blue using the cool colors helps keep the uh, the tones nice and bright rather than uh, a little bit uh, grayer and um, and earthier. So I want to go for the bright tones here. So mixing up a little bit more. It's a little bit darker than my than the first medium green that I mixed up, but that's okay. It's still the same colors that I'm using. And I just do want to be careful of leaving a lot of white areas for as long as I can. Cuz the uh, the paint will spread a bit and I don't want to get rid of my white areas too soon. I want to preserve them for if I want to go back in and add more yellow, for example. I'm just being really careful as I get up to that bird and that branch. The brush I'm using is a Da Vinci Cosmo Top Mix B. It's a synthetic blend and it holds a lot of water and it also has a pretty nice tip. So it's a good all around brush for, for uh, painting in larger areas. So now I'm using my darker green. And if you didn't see how I mixed that, it's basically the same as the medium green, except I add a tiny bit of that dark red that's on the bottom there, which is actually called Pyrrole Orange in the Daniel Smith kit. But it's a warm red and it tends to darken and neutralize the bright green. And now for those final white areas that I left, I'm putting in that blue to look like the sky peeking, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> look like the sky peeking through. Then once everything's covered, I'm just going to go back around a bit and fine-tune things. As long as my paper is still wet, which it is at that stage, then I can keep working in it, but I don't want to overwork it. 
I'm using some of that blue just to go right behind those head feathers. I'm using a smaller round brush here just to get into those, those fine areas. between his feet. I'm just painting this wet on dry. I don't need to pre-wet the paper for just as, that tiny of an area. I'm going in a little bit darker around the bird because he's going to have white feathers or whitish gray feathers on the chest and I want them to really stand out against that, that background. My background is actually dry now. I'm using my uh, stiff, um, this is a synthetic brush, synthetic round brush. It has a good, good springiness for wiping away um, paint and I just, I'm just cleaning up the edge of that tree a little bit where I didn't, don't want the paint to be. Just using my damp bristles, gently rubbing along the paper and then blotting it up. So now I'm going to mix the color for the tree. So I'm going to start with a dark brown. You can see I'm using a little bit of that Pyrrole orange, which is the warm red. I'm using French ultramarine, which is a warm blue. And I'm also adding a bit of my warm yellow. Mixing them all together gets a really nice, rich brown color. I'm going to pre wet the tree. Just being careful to stay within that white area. Speeding it up. The other really nice thing about French Ultramarine is that the nature of that paint itself is it's granulating, which means it has larger little bits that are in the pigment that tend to settle into the, uh, the grooves of the paper. And in something like this, where you want the paint to create the texture, it works really well for, in this instance for the tree bark. It would not be something I would recommend necessarily for a sky where you don't want texture, but for something like like trees or rocks or anything like that, it, it really um, it helps it to almost paint itself. I loved painting this tree. It turned out really well and I was really happy with um, how well that technique worked on it. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of just dotting it along that wet area. I'm keeping it um, denser along the side of the main um, trunk and dark along the bottom of the branch. And that will just help set the highlight and shadow area of the tree and give it more form and dimension. I am darkening it, darkening it under the bird and under his feet, since he, the bird itself does cast a shadow. My paper is still really wet all along here, so I can, just like with the background, I can continue to work on it until it dries. And the other thing with this pigment mix is 
because of the French ultramarine, when you put it on the paper, on the wet paper, it does not spread really far. It kind of it bl blends out a little bit and it kind of s mostly stays where you put it, which which is really nice. That's why I can get that nice shadow in between the trunk and the branch, even though the paper's still wet, doesn't bleed all over into that little crook there. Now on the top here, I'm actually lifting away a little bit of that pigment to leave a highlight. And same, same thing along the left side of that trunk. Now the trunk is dry and I'm going to start mixing some of the colors for the Blue Jay. So I'm using my small Cosmo Top mix brush. This is, I believe, a size zero. I'm just pre-wetting the top of the feathers there. And I have my very, very dark blue mix. It's not quite as dark when you put it on the wet paper, but it's, at this stage, it's as dark as I want it. just following my photo reference. The beak I'm just painting wet on dry. And then I use a damp brush to blend out that little area on the top of the beak for a smooth wash, smooth transition. I'm getting the wing feathers pre-wet, then doing the same thing there. I don't want any hard edges on the feathers. Again, I'm using my damp brush just to lift up a little bit of that area. I mixed up a bit of a nearly black for some of these face details. I'm keeping the feather texture in mind as I make these tiny little strokes around the face.
Those blue feathers on the head are dry. I'm using a very watered down mix of that black to make it gray. I'm just adding a little bit of shading to those white feathers on the neck. I'm trying to be very careful not to overdo it. I do want to leave some of those white areas showing through. And I'm also using that watered down gray just to separate some of those blue feathers on top, giving them some form and dimension and separation. I still want to keep the wing nice and soft looking at this stage, which is why I'm doing the wet on wet, to, just to avoid those hard edges. And back to that gray mix, again carefully painting the feathers on the belly. Paying attention to the direction of the feather growth and just using little strokes and trying my best to not overdo it and save some of those whites. I'm trying to vary the color a bit just to give it some more interest, a little bit more realism, so it's not the same shade of gray all over. And I will be going over it again with another, uh, another layer once that dries, just to further enhance some of that uh, dimension. And I'm separating those back tail feathers. and a little bit more detail around the face feathers. The wing area is dry, so I'm just going in and doing a little bit more defining of some of those 
feathers on the shoulder. And my thicker mix of gray to further separate those tail feathers. Then I'm using my damp brush to, to, <clears throat> to smooth out that hard line. Now I'm using a darker mix of that blackish blue to separate some of the feathers on the wing. And then I'll be using that same color to make the little little black patterns on that on the wing feathers. Just doing my best to follow the photo reference here. And again, just adding a little bit more detail here. I shifted that gray a bit to more of a warmish grayish brown. Like I said earlier, I'd be going over this area again with another layer. So I'm just, again, just bringing some more depth and realism to the look of the belly feathers. making a shadow area where, where the wing meets the body. and darkening around the eye. and darkening some of the head feathers. Really starts to make him come alive when you add these really, really dark elements. I'm not gonna paint over the whole area, I'm just gonna paint it in little strokes again to look like more feather separation. I'm just going to speed that up. And 
I'm starting with the shadow of his, of his little feet. Trying to be aware of the highlight areas. Again, that is just just means following my reference as closely as I can without worrying about it being too photorealistic. darkening those black areas even a little bit more. Now for fun, some of the final touches, I'm using a little bit of white gouache. And that's just going to help bring back some of the highlights. And now I'm just mixing up some more black to sign my name. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel to see more art videos and give it a thumbs up and click the notification bell. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.